Oh, oh, this is the first time I've seen you. I know people pretty well. If I don't, I'll just call her nose. Um, yeah, I mean, try not to share because I'm trying to keep it. Well, you, repeat. yeah, you know, you know, you, you would get the same thing I did. Okay, I think we're ready to begin. I'm not sure why. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the June 21st meeting of the Ann Arbor Commission on Disability Issues. I am Sally Hart Peterson, Chair of the Ann Arbor Commission on Disability Issues. I'd like everyone to introduce themselves, starting with my left. On my left. I'm Tim Hull, I'm the Commissioner. Al Blix, Commissioner. Larry Keeler, Commissioner. Kathleen Mozart Batts, Commissioner. Rebecca Benedict, Commissioner. Allison Stroud, Commissioner. Thank you, and I know Kirk Westfall will be joining us in about 20 minutes. Um, our first order of business is approval of, a, of the agenda. Is there someone willing to move to approve? Rebecca move Benedict to approve. moves to approve. Oh. Larry seconds. Yeah, I got that to work. <laughs> this happens very quickly. All those in favor of the approval of the agenda, raise your hand and say aye. Aye. Okay. Um, we have the minutes of the May 17th meeting in front of us. It's the next item on the agenda. Has everyone had a chance to read them or review them? There's actually only one right answer to that, and that is yes. yes. <laughs> is there a move to approve the minutes of the May 21st meeting? Kathleen Mozek Butts moves to approve. Al Sorry. seconds. Any discussion or edits or changes? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. Um, moving on to presentations. Our first presentation is from Ira Lax from the Washtenaw Library for the Blind and Physically Disabled. Ira, happy Hello. first day of summer. Yes, summer solstice. It's a great day. Uh, thank you all. And uh, there's no meeting again till. Right, so we take July off because our week coincides with art fair, okay. and then we give ourselves a little summer vacation in August. Okay. And so okay. we are back really on September 17th, I believe, is the third Wednesday, third Wednesday in September. Okay. I can double check. I'll stop but by it the does not mean day. that we will do any link work in the meantime. <laughs> We're not meeting as, a, as an official commission, but we still may have our committee meetings oh, in the okay. interim. Okay, yeah. okay, good. Um, well, uh, we are, our summer game at the library is in full swing. Uh, this is the kids card. Uh, we've had hundreds and hundreds of kids already coming in with their, uh, with their older ones uh, ready to roll with, they read 10 books, they get stickers, uh, they bring the card in any time to kind of track their progress and uh, there are just so many things to do to interest just about everybody around town. Uh, once you go to play.aadl.org, uh, you can sign up, any age person can do this. And then we have all these creative looking badges that you, if you click on them, they give you a challenge or a puzzle or a uh, scavenger hunt or something. You can, it can get you outside around town looking for stuff and then you, you report back and you get your points for doing that thing. So you people collect amazing amounts of points and then they can, beginning in about mid-July, our online store opens and they can trade their points in for all kinds of things. So uh, it's a very interactive game. Uh, so uh, anyone can join. Uh, this is the adult card. Uh, so you read five books and Give them in, you get a $5 fine forgiveness or a, a dollar off at our uh, friend's bookstore. Um, so uh, there's just, there are so many programs going on right now that I'm not gonna even start talking about them, but check online and uh, we just increased the number during the summer. Um, they cover so many different things. We have some wonderful art exhibits. Uh, one is of the uh, Silver Club from Turner uh, in the basement of the downtown library. Uh, there's some wonderful art there. It's in the multi-purpose room. And then in the glass cases, uh, a very nice uh, Nichols Arcade. Um, it's the 100th year 
since the opening of Nichols Arcade. So we've got some beautiful historical photographs um, of uh, the different shops that have been in there. Many of you may remember the post office. It wasn't, it was, I think it was still going in the 90s. Um, so stop by and see that. And, uh, and then I, I just wanna mention one book that I, I, I discovered lately. It's called Detroit is No Dry Bones. And uh, The Eternal City of the Industrial Age by a great photographer, Camilo Jose Vergara. And it's U of M Press 2016. And he's been spending at least one week in Detroit for the last 25 years uh, documenting um, what he calls the ruins and how those spaces have transformed over that time period, over about a quarter of a century. And they're, they're phenomenal color photographs. And uh, <clears throat> it's just, it's, and it just gives you a lot of, uh, a lot of hope for uh, the creative ways people are dealing with uh, the transformation of Detroit uh, all across the spectrum. So uh, we've got three copies of it. Uh, it's, a, it's a lot of pictures, kind of heavy book, but, uh, but check it out when you get a chance. Detroit is No Dry Bones uh, by Camilo Jose Vergara. And uh, if you want to see what's happening this week, it's a really nice feature on our website. All you do is go to aadl.org and uh, it's there. It's the first thing you see, what's happening this week. Concerts, lectures, book, book talks, whatever. Uh, crafts, we have a ton of crafts going on right now because of our secret lab, which is our, our new uh, linoleum floored space in the basement. And with a linoleum floor, we can do a lot more things that might get a little messy. <laughs> and uh, you know, better than doing it on carpet. So uh, just last but not least, if uh, you would like the, if you can't read regular print or hold a book, please call us at the Washtenaw Library for the Blind and Physically Disabled. Uh, our motto is so that all may read. And we will get you either large print books Excuse or a player and uh, recorded books and there's many other ways to listen. You can listen on any device you have. And uh, I know Larry takes advantage of all that. And uh, 15 books a week sometimes. 15 books a week. That's not unusual. We have, we have patrons that, you know, at least read a book a day. And that's a lot of time. And uh, so um, it means a lot to them. And we want everyone who could uh, take advantage of that to to do it. All right, any questions? Okay, Rebecca, well, have oh, a great, oh yes. <laughs> Ira, yes. I just have one question. How many stickers do you have? <laughs> <laughs> you mean? Uh, from, from the kids thing. <laughs> oh. Are you, you collecting? <laughs> uh, I am not, but I know a lot of people who are. Yeah, it sounds yeah. fun. Sounds yes. like some really, really yes. good programs. Yeah, thank very you good. very much. Thank, thank you. you. Yes. I have a question. I don't. I don't recall hearing you talk about the art fair coming up. Yes. Does the library usually punch you the place in a booth at the library? I mean, at, at the, the art, art fair? fair. We used to. I don't think we do anymore. Okay. Yeah. Um, we're we're involved with the summer festival every Sunday. We have a booth. Okay. And uh, we sponsor one of the. Uh, bands for uh, young people that is on the stage, I think it's seven o'clock. And uh, so we do that. Um, and we do the townie fair, I believe. Okay. But I don't think the art fair itself. Okay. Do you know where the booth for the library at the summer festival usually <clears throat> is? At the, at the uh, summer festival, yes, it's right next to the stage. Okay. Towards the food booths. Okay. Thank you. So next Sunday, you can find them there. Any okay. Sunday. <laughs> All right. Any other Anything questions? Else? Okay. Thanks, Thank Ira. you. I'll leave the uh, brochures over here. Great. Next, we have Carolyn Growey, Executive Director and CEO of Ann Arbor Center for Independent Living. Welcome, Carolyn. Thank you, Sally, and thank you to the commissioners for continuing to have the Ann Arbor CIL be part of the 
presentation each month for the commissioners as well as the community. Uh, just so that if any community members are seeing us uh, on air for the first time. The Ann Arbor Center for Independent Living is 42 years old. We've been in the community doing great work with all of our community members with and on behalf of people with disabilities towards successes at home, at school, at work, and in the community. I have two main areas that I'm going to talk to you about and share flyers for, but I want to share a couple other things that are going on. Uh, we have had continued interest in expansion of our peer mentor program. So there is opportunity for individuals who might like to be matched up with somebody who may have a disability and to learn more about their own disability or their, more, or their own engagement to be involved at the center. We also have uh, increased the number of days per week that we are doing art and theater. So art is now three days a week on Mondays, Thursdays, and Fridays. And theater is now two days a week on Wednesdays and Saturdays. As well, we have some employment programs that are coming up between now and when you would see us next in September on air. On, on uh, July 13th, we have a community event that will be taking place. We'll be doing a disability awareness and sensitivity training, followed by Title I employer obligations that will be both for businesses and for individuals with disabilities. And then that event is followed by, uh, the same day, an event that we'll be doing role play and interviewing with some of the businesses that will be at the previous event and some of the participants. So if you'd like to be involved, we welcome you to get in touch with us. For every event that we have, we try to make sure things are posted on our website. Our website is www.annarborcil.org. And as well, you're able to write to us for an email at info at aacil.org for emails. And then you're welcome to call us at 734-971-0277. Let me share the other two events that I do have flyers for you today on, which is uh, one is that the 27th anniversary of the ADA is on July 26th, which is next month. Uh, it's open to the entire community. It's a way to look at the progress that's been made with, with the Americans with Disability Act, as well as an opportunity to learn about that if you're interested. And further, we always at this event have been doing uh, our John Weir Scholarship Awardees, which are community members that are from our local community throughout Washtenaw <coughs> County, Livingston, and Monroe, who may have been awarded this scholarship this past year and they come and receive their uh, recognition at this event. So we'd love to have representation of the commission and of course all community members who would like to be there. There's a lot of fun at that event. There's music, games, food, all kinds of things and activities. It's a public event. We're on the bus line on the number six. Uh, we're also available through paratransit and we welcome the community to join us. It'll be uh, July 26th. Uh, from, from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. at the Ann Arbor CIL, which is at 3941 Research Park Drive. Again, you can watch for updates at annarborcil.org, or you can write us at info at aacil.org. And then the second one that I just want to share, we have a newer flyer that came from the Rotary to us, which is about saving the date for September. We invite everybody to join us on July 17th, we will be picnicking out at Gallup Park. And at that event, there will be the grand opening of the Centennial Universal Access Park that will be there. I'm pleased to report to you that there will be, and while we don't have that today, but we will hopefully have that for you in September, which will be right before the event, but we'll make sure that it gets posted on the city website and that we also get it posted on the Ann Arbor CIL website and hopefully out in other community notifications. Uh, there will be some transportation that will be made available to transfer from a location. I do not want to tell you the wrong location at the moment because we want to make sure it happens. So those are the things that we have upcoming. Quick question. You said yes. July 17th. Did you mean September 17th? Oh, thank you so much. September okay. 17th. Yeah. Okay. September 17th from 3 to 6 in Gallup Park. Thank you for that correction, yeah. Sally. Uh, and again, uh, we will make sure that the community is made aware of where that transfer point will be. We have one in mind at the moment, but I'd rather not put that out until we have all the confirmations of how people will be connected. 
Uh, there will also definitely be parking at Huron High School, where there will also be some sort of shuttle that will go from Huron High School back to the back part of the park. We're so excited that this park is coming to have universal access for our whole community. We want to have as many people and their families come and join us to help celebrate all the work that the Rotary has done, the City of Ann Arbor has done, uh, the thankfulness of the Michigan Department of Natural Resources Trust Fund, and of course, as you know, your Ann Arbor CIL is always in favor of having more access, so we always give our two cents into the process. So. When, I don't know if there are any other questions. When you have the transportation figured out, can you let us know so we can put it on the disability resource page? Absolutely. And thank you for working with Rotary on working that out for yes. all of us. It's been a, a sticky wicket, but I'm glad it's under resolution. It is under resolution, and we would love to have all kinds of events continually get posted on the disability website for the city, and we will continue to forward information to you so that can be available. Any other questions? Anything else? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> great. Thank you. Okay, great. Well, we Thank hope you. to see all of you at some of these events upcoming this summer. And uh, we, we love Ann Arbor. We love our community. And so it's great to have all of you be involved and invested in it, both here in person as well as out in the community. Thank you. Thanks. Next on the agenda, we have public comments. Public members of the public are um, welcome to speak up to eight minutes on any topic of their choice. Um, and it, regardless of age, you could be 5, 10, 15, 20, if you wanted to address the commission. Is there anyone here who wants to address the commission? Seeing no one, we will close our public comment period. Um, on old business, city personnel report, Heather Cook is um, uh, participating online, and she will, I'm sure, in the minutes of the meeting, provide any updates on city personnel. The chair report of a couple of things. Um, I said earlier, another um, date mix up on my part. I said September 17th is the third Wednesday. September 17th is the grand opening of the um, Universal Access Playground. We will meet on Wednesday, September 20th. That is the next meeting of this commission, is on Wednesday, September 20th at 3.15 p.m. Also joining us that day will be our newest commissioner, Patty Smith, who is approved by city council on Monday evening. Um, she was not able to join us today, but she will be there with us at the next meeting. So we welcome Patty aboard. Um, my only other item for chair update is about the sensory garden. I spoke with um, Linda Evans earlier this afternoon. She sends her best regards to the commission. Um, they were able to purchase some new plants from the farmer's market for the um, sensory garden. However, those have been very popular with the rabbits. So there's, um, we have a, we're in dire need of a rabbit reduction program at the sensory garden. Um, critter control has been called, but they don't do rabbits. So um, in consultation with the city, we're going to try rabbit pellets. Hopefully that will work, but if anyone has any good ideas about how to eradicate rabbits from the sensory garden, please let us know. Larry. I believe it. When, um, did you know, did, you know we found a couple babies in there in May, right? Oh, you did, okay. Yes, that there were a couple sense. babies in there in May. Okay. And I did know about this, I was gonna go, but I think it was too close to the meeting, and yeah, this, today's meet, uh, them out there today. Okay, so, um, we're also looking, uh, she's also pursuing an option um, to actually have the sensory garden water twice a day because we don't think that's happening right now. So, um, but it is under the, the care and nurturing of the Lions, Host Lions Club and Linda and everyone else who's been volunteering. So the, the science, sorry, the sensory garden is, is a bloom. And we still have a commissioner that does it mostly. Yes, that would be Larry, that, that would be Larry. Um, Updates to uh, Community Engagement Committee is next, Al. <clears throat> Our next meeting will be tomorrow of the Community Engagement Committee. <clears throat> um, the topic, I, I'm eager to have people suggest topics for the Community Engagement Committee, <clears throat> but um, I will be raising the issue that um, is a little closer to my heart, and that is the fact that um, our latest state budget uh, is making some changes in the way that mental health and disability services, developmental disability services are 
going to be provided. There is a query, you know, a problematic <coughs> effort to privatize uh, the delivery of those services, and uh, we're going to have some pilots over the next couple of years. So I will be talking about that, and that kind of dovetails with uh, the county commissioners are considering um, a countywide millage to support police and mental health treatment. We have way too many people with mental illness who are incarcerated because there's no other place for them to be. So <clears throat> the whole question of how our community deals with people who either have mental illness or have developmental disabilities and how that gets funded will be a topic for anybody who's interested in discussing that tomorrow afternoon at 5.30 across the way here. Now we will not be meeting in July or August. Okay. And our next meeting oh, really? is, I believe, the 28th of oh, September. September. Terrific. Recruiting activity, Larry. That would be mean. You stole Patty Smith from me. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, that, that's all right. You didn't She's know. She's already I, been recruited. Well, no, I, 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 she got confirmed Monday, actually. So <laughs> I, I actually um, stopped by the office quite a bit. I stopped by the mayor's office quite a bit. and. I've been doing a lot before I come down here just to make sure that the people I've heard about have been confirmed so I can say who they are if they've been <laughs> confirmed because, you know, if they don't, I don't really want to say who they are in case they don't get accepted and all that. But, of course, we're going to still be, since even though we're on uh, that, that summer hiatus, we still, the recruiting committee still does work. I still do pop around and check out things and I still do recommend people and so if you get your applications in you can still do that over the summer and that might give you time in case you're a little you know you wonder what the commission does and you don't want to jump in with both feet you still have a couple months to read and find out what's going on and you can also you can call the mayor's office for an application at 7946161 or you can go to a2 disability issues at gmail.com and you can find an application there. Kathleen. So that leaves how many open seats then with uh, Anna leaving and then? I think we still have two. Okay. That sounds right to me. Okay. And new to the agenda, which will be an ongoing item, is Tim Hull coming to update us on the work of the Transportation yeah. Commission. Yes. I leave off. You kind of get kind of. Oh, I'm up. sorry. I did. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. So back Tim, up. We just skipped right over, people, Allison. Uh, I did not promise need to you come back. You probably need an exit. So Tim can go ahead. You want Tim to go ahead? Yeah. I'm so sorry, yeah. Allison. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. You're on, Tim. So last. Week, yeah, it was really a lot of overview, or last, not last week, but last month, I mean. It was uh, a lot of overview material on, like, the climate plan and the transportation plans, the various plans the city has made. And uh, we got to talking about, like, current projects, and I asked about uh, what was trying to see if staff could find out what was going on with Research Park Drive Crosswalk and the Nixon Green Duvarin intersection. At that time, we had no information, and it, so, yeah, I got the information. It sounds like the Research Park Drive and Washington and Pittsfield, I forgot that one, that MDOT, well, the Research Park Drive is slated for next year's construction season, and no, not didn't have many details on it, so I'm wondering if there might be still some space to offer input, and but also the Washington and Pittsfield, that was like on MDOT's list of projects. They're still waiting for an update from MDOT, but it's there. And uh, the Nixon Green and Duvarin, well, I basically ended up finding out by going to the public meeting, at which you found out, yeah, it was a total closure. And uh, sounds like if the information didn't get out very promptly, because this was just a few weeks before, and AAATA had no clue the pro there was detours even planned when I asked them back in May before this public meeting, and uh, they got the detour information up like three days before the detour was to start, and because it's a drastic reach change, it's basically a temporary route change rather than a detour. and. 
Yeah, I, I've been going back and forth with them on the many issues this brings up. Like, off-peak, these two segments of the route don't connect without, like, a 40-minute wait. And uh, I've actually got a call in to someone at uh, AAATA with, uh, who does the service operations, and I was going to be talking to them about this a little more. And uh, it's... Yeah, I think it's clear what they're doing now, but it does seem like in so, in many circumstances you're going to end up waiting at Plymouth Mall for half an hour to make a transfer to do certain trips you could do easily on the regular route. Yikes. Okay. And uh, you know, particularly off-peak. Okay. I will say the peak hours are a little better, but yeah, it's just... Yeah, the Route 22 has been kind of messed up, and the 23 a little less so, but still, it's, yeah, it really should have been talked about a couple months earlier, it yeah. seems, because this is definitely going to, I knew that was going to have a drastic impact on the routes when I, if I had thought they were going to do a full closure, and it seems like there's some communication issues with the people who do the construction, and I wonder, Tim, if you could um, update us if, given your input and your feedback, and how long it took for them to come up with the with the so-called detour, which is really a new route. Um, if you could help with alternatives or help us understand what it, alternatives, rather than having someone wait 40 minutes. At yeah. Um, if course, they yeah. make changes based on your feedback, will you let us know? And we'd like to put that on the disability. Yeah, and, and some of the stuff, I mean, I'm not sure. I mean, that's just from looking at the schedule. Maybe they've got some transfer plan that's not okay. totally clear from the, but from what I understand, I've asked a number of questions that that is the case, that off peak, there's going to be a lot of waiting. And okay. But the other thing is that parts of the 23 route up uh, Nix, or up Green Road, they have a shuttle for that, but only during peak hours. Okay. Like, <laughs> like, yeah, like if, if you... If you live up in that apartment complex up there at Nixon and like, and you want to go downtown, like, you're going to have to walk a mile unless it's peak hours. Okay, interesting, Larry. That's why I don't live on North Side anymore. But um, no, and you you do know that uh, the next. I was thinking about you might want to go to the AA, ATA board meeting, the next one, which isn't till the third Thursday of in August, so yeah. keep that in mind. Well, you might want to go to that one too and see, and, and speak at their public comment if you. Yeah, one, I was, two, two. I was, I almost went to the one last week, but because this was just starting to happen, but I was just really busy and mm -hmm. I just didn't uh, get to it. It's, you know, you could, well, well, I'll talk to you later about that because I actually did go to that and I probably could have brought it up for you. Yeah, the thing is, I know that, uh, yeah, like you're talking about the north side and issues. I know that they, there are some issues like, because part of the reason I do live there is because I work on North Campus and that yeah. route is the only direct route I can really get there. It's that or the 66 and it's just, there's, North, medical and central campus are well connected. North Campus is not, unless okay. you're, unless you're by a blue bus. Okay. Thank you for that update. And do you have anything else? No, but if anyone else has their own particular problems, feel free to comment and ask me because, I mean, I know some of these problems relate to my own use cases, and I know, but I know that they will relate to other people's right. use cases as well. Like the Green Road stuff isn't really affecting me, but it would affect other people. And I actually looked at moving to those apartments, okay. and now I'm like, I'm glad I didn't. What's the best way for people to reach you, Tim? Um, yeah, my email, uh, tim, sure. tim at timhull.org, T-I-M-H-U-L-L. -L. Wonderful. Thank you. And now we will move on to Partners in Access. I'm sorry again, Allison. That's the floor okay. is Thank yours. You. Thank you. She's much. a full committee, uh, too. So we have two meetings in the standby meeting. And for both of these meetings, it was largely focused on information gathering and what our next steps are. And 
the main topic that we focus on the how do we get a hold of the deep, deep downtown development authority and yeah, set up a meeting with them to talk about the accessibility and the safety of accessible parking with where they pay by the e park or e pay kiosk mm -hmm. and how people who are using wheelchairs or have mobility issues may access them. So just arranges where there is not so great weather or where the conditions may be a little bit more dangerous. We now have a meeting with them with someone who is the manager, the punky manager of the DDA on July 12th, which is our next partners and access subcommittee meeting. And we've also reached out and finally got a hold of nobody. So these people want to continue talking to us and we are in email communication and I will CC other partners and access folks as we try to decide whether we want to continue meeting at the same partners and access date or if we need to set up a different date where more people can attend these meetings. And I could tell you that they are still interested in setting up a long-term relationship, a long-term collaboration of some sort, trying to expand the no removal assistance beyond just the Water Hill neighborhood. But we still have to figure out what we want our next steps to be and what our appropriate actions are at this point in order to make sure we have something in place by next winter, hopefully by the very first heavy snowfall, which should not happen any time this summer. <laughs> uh, Rebecca? It, it figures that on the, the first day of summer that we would talk about snow buddies, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Timely. Uh, Larry? Oh, are, are you finished or? I'll, I'll wait till you're finished, Allison. I, well, I had a couple more topics to go, but if you have something that you feel is important to address now, I think that's okay. So why don't you go ahead? Since you had your hand up. Oh, no, 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 go ahead. I, I'll just wait, because it might be covered. Okay. Um, we also talked about what we wanted to do for the safety really, and we still need to get more information and we plan to get in touch with Sally and Kirk about what uh, the appropriate next steps are and who we should contact to talk about what can be done in order to install some safety really for walkway in areas where it's not safe or there's an angle, a slanted angle to where people may trip over or fall over or there are curves at the edges of the sidewalk where it may not be safe for a person who doesn't have any visual ability and may trip over and fall, like what happened with Larry on one point a few, a couple of months ago, I don't remember. Then you can have your head up. That was me. That was me. I did, yeah. I did, Sally did send me something and I did send it in and I haven't heard anything back yet. So you are working with Craig Hubie no. on that? Yeah, Craig, I think it's Craig. I haven't heard have anything from you there, you got right. there. I asked you with a couple emails to send me information, I just haven't received anything from you. So I wanted to bring that up at the next point of an access meeting to make sure that we don't talk about it. So if you're able to find that email, please forward it to me. Sure. Because I haven't seen it yet. Does so anyone else have any questions? Yeah, can I just clarify what I understand to be the status of the situation with the sidewalk where Larry fell is mm -hmm. um, I did bring this up with the city administrator and Craig okay. Coopy and um, Craig said he would like some more details on what actually happened we sent him the pictures that Larry took and then Larry you are going to follow up with I with did details. follow up with the details yes and you have not heard back and from I have Craig. not heard back okay so um, I can follow up with Craig Cupy and Howard Lazarus. I didn't realize you hadn't heard back yet. So. And, and I didn't send the pictures, Allison, because I don't have them. In, in. I sent them the pictures. Yeah. No, well, that's that's what I'm saying. I didn't send the pictures. Sally sent them, so that's okay. why you didn't get a copy of that kind of thing, Allison. So we will loop you, you back in. You sent the pictures. Yeah. You just needed to find the contact information of people that you were in communication with. 
about the sand racks or the issues that you had in that area. That's what I was waiting for. The cash house information. Larry said that he was talking to a couple of people already about the trouble that he had when he took over the sand rock, the curb mm -hmm. portion of the sand rock, and he had not sent me the cash house information. So I wanted to be sure that we had the cash house information of the people that he said he was talking to. So that way we can move forward with them, but he did not specify who they were. Were those people who had already had in the community who had experienced the same kind of falls, or were they people in the city? I think they might have been people in the city. They did not attend. S sorry, city staff. It was our email. Okay, we'll take the rest of this maybe offline and and okay. resolve. But we need to make sure. Um, I didn't realize this had come out of Partners in Access. I I had heard it from Larry. Right. And so. We'll make sure the appropriate people are looped in and so that the public understands, you know, what the resolution is, because I think that's important too. Yeah, Larry was not able to attend the last part of an access okay. meeting, so we had not had a chance to talk about it okay. in detail yet. So all right. Thanks. Yeah. Any other questions? Clark? I guess just a, a comment um, regarding parking accessibility and I, I didn't want to share this until I tried it myself. Um, there was an article about it in, in the Ann Arbor News, but some folks might not have heard that there's a, now an, an app uh, called ePark, mm -hmm. which replaces the need to go up to a, a kiosk. And I've, I'm, I'm happy to say I've tried it and, and it works. So it's, I think if you're a smartphone enabled, um, which we can't expect everybody to be, but um, for those who have that technology, I, I can heartily recommend it. I, I've used it and I haven't gotten a ticket, so it must be working because <laughs> <laughs> if you lapse on your time, uh, you certainly will be ticketed. So that's one more tool, but um, I'm, I'm glad that there's more conversations about the kiosk accessibility still happening. Um, I, saw, I saw that today when I was paying at the E-Park, and I didn't know that it didn't exist before, so it must be very well marked for me who parked at Kiosk before to go, oh, and I was almost thinking, I'll get to the meeting, I'll download that, <laughs> but I was like, no, I'll just do it now. So it, it must be well marked, I noticed. Okay. And then I, without going too much to detail, when Kathleen and I met at the last Pioneers and Access meeting, we did talk about the location of the accessible parking and how close and roads for drivers and or passengers would be to the nearest intersection or the nearest curb cut. And that was a whole other conversation that we wanted to look into a little bit more closely. For example, if a driver was a wheelchair user, were a wheelchair user, this person would have to get into oncoming, into traffic and potentially have to go as far as the intersection to be able to get on the sidewalk, especially if there are no curb cuts close, to, close enough to the car for this person to safely get out of the way of traffic. So that was one of the major concerns that we addressed is that we would like to look into a little bit more closely and I think we do plan to bring it up with the DDA meeting because that is relevant to our topic at this hand. Kathleen, did you want to add to that? Because that mm, was a really good discussion at mm -hmm. that time. Okay, that's it. So I will be finished with the report for now, and we will still continue to meet throughout the summer because we have work that still needs to be done, and we will keep at it. Are there any more questions for Allison? Okay. Next, we have announcements. Does anyone have any announcements? Um, we have a few announcements. Okay. And Anna. Anna, the former commissioner actually sent me an email and wanted me to be sure to send an announcement. And I'm gonna have to find it <laughs> right now. I didn't expect us to move so quickly to the announcement. Oh boy. If anyone else has an announcement now, please go ahead and share them while I'm looking for the email. How about we move on to new business and I can bring everyone's attention to the U of M Council for Disability Concerns June 
meeting update and minutes, which I think are on Legistar, attached with oh, this agenda. Um, thank you. We don't need to discuss them. I just wanted to pe people to know that they were there. Um, are there any other items for new business? Yes, Carolyn, you may approach the podium. <coughs> Just one of the things that's really wonderful that is happening at the University of Michigan with the Council on Disability Concerns is that there is now the ability to participate not in person. So if people are interested, they can uh, write to, well, they can see them in the minutes that are beyond the legislature on the city's website to Anna or to the council to gain that access, but they are running their meetings now through Blue Jeans, and so you can call in or get online with your computer Great. and be able to participate or listen in on those meetings. And that's a huge way to create more access because one of the pieces is, of course, the room is small where you end up meeting, but the other piece is that obviously our university covers wider than just Ann Arbor, and many of our members may be at jobs or other places during the day when that meeting takes place. So just so that people know, it's become an accessible meeting that's wider than the hour where it takes place. So. Wonderful, that's great news. Thank you, Carolyn. Anyone else? Allison, let us know when you're ready. Yes, I found one of the two emails. <laughs> and this is what Carolyn was telling you about life. I kind of there is also a new tool, a new feature on Facebook where you can get closed caption live. Oh, and that right. is really beneficial for the deaf and hard of hearing because getting live access to events clearly happening at the time without any access to the information in text has been really difficult on anybody who really needs that information to text to figure out what is happening, what people are saying, what is the dialogue here. So there's that tool, and it's provided by AI Media. And I'm hoping that everyone can check it out, and I will share the link. And I think it may be useful to share this link to give people information about this on the Disability Resource website, just to see what is happening and how it works. Great. And I checked it out, and it's pretty well. It's pretty accurate for me, at least. I don't know how everybody thinks you have, you have a better hearing than I do, mm. and you probably will be able to understand what the verbal information would be as opposed to what the textual information would look like. So you can actually check it out and let me know how it works for you. Great. And another announcement that I wanted to share is about the University of Michigan and the doctors and surgeons in the Department of Otolaryngology, neck surgery are partnering with Hope Clinic at the University of Michigan to create the Hope for Hearing program that provides hearing aid to uninsured adults. So this is really a low-income program that is new, newly developed. And they're working to ensure that getting hearing aids or getting the help that you need in order to hear is not such a financial burden for people who really don't have the insurance covers because the insurance currently does not cover all of the cost of the hearing aid, maybe only up to $1,200. But hearing aids are often much more expensive than $1,200. So this is really a nice step forward for the community especially the deaf and hard of hearing community. So those are the two announcements that I wanted to share. And thank you, Anna, for sending <laughs> me these announcements. Great. Anything else to announce? Any other new business? Everyone enjoy your summer. And I know we'll all be busy in our respective subcommittees um, throughout the summer, but we'll see everyone together. We on still got the recruiting door open, we too. We still have the recruiting door That's open. Right. I hope to see everyone on <clears throat> September 17th on that Sunday at the Gallup Park grand opening of the Universal Access Playground. And again, here in Council Chambers on September 20th at 3.15 p.m. for our next commission meeting. Thanks, everyone.
We're adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I might be able to go. Pardon? I might go meet Carl. I know that.